We have already started discussion on gestation of topocastic disease in previous class. Today we are continuing it. Uh, we already discussed pre-malignant diseases. Today we will discuss malignant diseases, which are invasive. Those who are joining uh, now, uh, let me tell you that we covered uh, we covered the most of this uh, presentation in our last session. Unfortunately, we couldn't get hooked on to net because of various reasons uh, that day we had a lot of rains etc or whatever but uh dr sarah is pre presented she presented that last wednesday yeah. and she's uh, going through her uh, uh, set of slides again uh but she'll be emphasizing the last part which is uh, gestational trophoplastic neoplasia and after her i'll be taking about half an hour and uh, i have also made uh prepared a presentation which I'll be presenting after Sarah completes. In the previous class, we have already discussed uh, the classification uh, pre-malignant uh, pre, uh, malignant disease, which is complete mole and partial molar pregnancy, in which we will we discuss uh, the आप अपनी प्रेजेंटेशन भी उस पे उस साइट पे डाल देना जहां पे तो वो मैंने लैपटॉप में ना चीट की जो आपने करेक्शन बताई थी वो पी वी को मैं वहां से डाल देना डाल देना साइट पे ताकि वो इसको भी ले लेंगे आह टुडे वी विल डिस्कस जेस्टेशनल प्रोफोकास्टिक न्यूप्लाज्या जेस्टेशनल न्यूप्लास्टिक न्यूप्लाज्या कैन बी इनवेसिव मोल कोरियोकार्सिनोमा आप प्लेसेंटल साइट पे प्रोफोकास्टिक uh, tumor and epithelioid trophoplastic tumor. Invasive mole, it usually arises uh, from a complete mole. And uh, invasive mole is uh, called invasive because the malignant cells, they invade the invasion of the malignant cells in the myometrium causes, which lead to the perforation of, may lead to the perforation of uh, uh, uterus and cause uh, interperitoneal bleeding. Uh, so sometimes the patient may present with the shock and uh, as well as vaginal bleeding, a patient uh, complain of persistent vaginal bleeding, uh, lower abdominal pain because of the involvement of uh, uterus uh, and my, uh, the myometrium. And it can may spread to the adjacent uh, structure, for example, bladder and rectum and cause uh, accordingly symptoms, for example, hematuria or bleeding the rectum. And, um, Cause, can cause metastasis to the uh, lungs and uh, to the vagina and uh, different parts of the body. So, so the the lungs, lungs, lungs first, lungs then vagina. Local, vagina, liver, brain. Okay. Or lungs or brain, fast forward, and typically lungs or brain, the fast forward, and locally vaginal nodules. Also. Choreo carcinoma, it. Uh, it choreo carcinoma, ki baat pe karna. Invasive mole essentially is that which in the, invades locally. In locally. It's a locally invasive mole, and in that fashion, it acts like uh, hist histologically, it may not show uh, some of the features of malignancy, like mitotic figures or those or ATP, cellular ATP. But uh, its characteristic is uh, malignant, which is spread. So, locally spreading uh, invasive mole, and therefore, it is included in uh, the that category or that group which is uh, uh, malignant. Choriocarcinoma, it often uh, arises after a complete mole, but it can, so, uh, can also arise after any pregnancy. For example, it can also arise after a partial mole, uh, uh, non-polar, uh, non-molar uh, uh, abortion, ectopic pregnancy, or term pregnancy. Uh, it shows uh, both sensation of a blast and uh, cytotrophic of a blast in the form of sheet. Uh, in histopathology, it also shows the hemorrhage, necrosis, and intravascular growth. Highly malignant and again uh, to the lungs and uh, cause uh, cannon, uh, or the x ray shows the cannon appearance. wall, uh, wall uh, appearance. Well, there are rounded shadows uh, in the lungs on chest x ray. Chest x ray is a very relevant investigation, uh, which should be done at baseline also, but it's an important investigation. Yeah, from the prognosis point of view, because this is how you uh, you follow up these patients by uh, uh, periodic chest X-rays to rule out 
secondaries in lungs, or if there were uh, uh, metastasis in lungs, then uh, the prognosis, how they are responding to the treatment. Uh, in Vigimol, it shows the um, involvement of myometrium, and polycarcinoma shows the necro necrotic part and hemorrhagic part, uh, but the necrosis within the uh, endometrium or it, uterine. It is not uterine wall. Now, the placental cytophagastic tumor and the tichyloid uh, tophagastic tumor. Uh, it is very rare and about 0.2% uh, of gestational autophagastic disease. Uh, uh, most commonly, it is after the molar pregnancy and uh, in the uh, histopathology. It, uh, uh, I mean, it has most common for a normal pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> so, normal, so? normal pregnancy. Usually, normal pregnancy. Uh, just about the molar pregnancy. Ke baad hote ye normal pregnancy. Ke baad. It so, uh, shows uh, regulated cytoplasm and uh, excellent source of uh, cytoplasm and delight. Uh, it produces HCG, but uh, less HCG comparatively uh, the uh, other two uh, invasive and polycarcinoma. Uh, Whereas in the placental uh, site trophoblastic uh, tumor, the HCG level is comparatively higher than the epithelioid trophoblastic uh, tumor. Uh, in the menstrual irregularities, patient may present uh, with the uh, amenorrhea or uh, irregular vaginal bleeding and a uh, plus lower abdominal uh, pain. Uh, it is confined to the uterus for the uh, long time and a uh, patient uh, pre uh, present with the complaints after uh, maybe three to four years. Uh, it is chemo resistant, so uh, we uh, uh, chemotherapy is not usually. Uh, uh, we give uh, we don't give chemotherapy in this uh, two uh, type of the tumors. Uh, it uh, mainly it goes the surgery. So here uh, it's uh, more nodular. So in structuring the histopathology form, so uh, comparatively the other two, uh, this shows the sheet of the uh, plasma. Investigation uh, beta CG. Test X ray, uh, cannonball X ray, uh, cannonball appearance on the, on the X ray, uh, ultrasound, uh, pelvis for the metastasis. Is my a few things. Beta ECG is the mainstay of uh, diagnosis and uh, monitoring of prognosis, how the disease is progressing and how it is uh, um, responding to treatment. So, beta ECG is a very valuable. Uh, tool of investigations uh, in our hands. One, G. Uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Can I ask one question? Anji. So about placental trophoblastic tumor, ye within uh, forty-eight hours or after forty-eight hours presentation, sir, explain kar de. Nee, forty-eight hours. Nee, forty-eight months. Months ki baat hai. So something which uh, uh, which shows itself after a pregnancy, after an index pregnancy, within uh, uh, as it is. Mere roti anda saath khao, salan khao. So, wo usme prognosis is better, but if it occurs uh, more than uh, four years after uh, a pregnancy, that means that. Uh, it's a kind of more lethal. It was me, uh, survival data of nomination. Is key, uh, many of the Kaniwa, the Bakis in the bar of the town. That is to see the uterus, its lining, etc., to rule out any local invasion or growth. And uh, also important is uh, to visualize ovaries if there are any fecal nutrients, because if HCG is rising, it will uh, stimulate uh, development of fecal nutrients in the ovaries, and so the ovaries would be enlarged. As a matter of fact, initially when ultrasound was not so widely available, what we used to do was we do pelvic examination. And uh, on pelvic examination, we try to palpate the ovaries. In a thin patient, normal ovary can be palpated, but in a patient who is uh, uh, not thin or who is uh, obese, one may ovaries by manually palpate the osakti. Sometimes we don't even get a good impression of the size of the ovaries by, by manual uh, palpation. 
So therefore, but now since we have ultrasound available so commonly, therefore, that part of the physical examination or assessment that is not mentioned in that. that. So ultrasound has uh, uh, an important uh, value in assessment or follow-up of uh, the patients. Just a, a CT chest. Well, again, uh, uh, X-ray is better, but if uh, further confirmation is required, then uh, CT of uh, uh, chest can be carried out. And also to identify brain uh, tumors, there is, uh, uh, we have to uh, take help of magnetic uh, MRI. Right, I'll start right from the beginning and I'll go through these slides uh, a little more quickly. Some of the early ones. Uncommon conditions because the incident is uh, quite small despite pregnancy being so common. Okay, histologically, uh, there are these six varieties. There is another one also which has been recently been added. Complete hydrated deformed mole, partial hydrated deformed mole, and malignant invasive mole. And then these three are uh, obvious uh, uh, malignant choriocarcinoma, the central site, and epithelioid uh, tumor. The last three, this is malignant forms, can arise after any type of pregnancy, not necessarily they will follow a mole. Whereas malignant invasive mole follows only mole. And the poliocarcinoma, placental site trophoblastic tumor, and epithelioid trophoblastic tumor can follow any type of pregnancy and any which does not necessarily has to be an intrauterine, and it can be uh, an ectopic pregnancy. And the recently added is atypical placental site nodule. Now we are going into quite a lot of detail about this, but that detail in for postgraduates is essential. If this were a lecture about uh, undergraduates, then I wouldn't have gone into that kind of detail, but for postgraduate, it's essential. This is another simplified way of uh, 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 classifying molar pregnancy, partial. These are villous gestational trophoblastic diseases, and non villous gestational trophoblastic diseases are the carcinoma, placentocyte, uh, trophoblastic tumor, and epithelial. Or and mole are of two types, complete or uh, partial. Uh, previously, we didn't really know how it uh, occurred, and it was considered to be a kind of degenerative and aberrant uh, 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 growth performance of the uh, trophoblast. 
but now we know that it is because of uh, uh, the uh, fertilization of an ovum which is devoid of its nucleus. The nucleus has been extruded out and either single sperm, which uh, then uh, after having uh, fertilized that ovum, uh, 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 multiplies its uh, uh, chromosomes and becomes a diploid karyotype, or it is fertilized with two sperms. About 90% of complete hydrated form moles are 46XX. And last time I told that it cannot be 46YY because for survival of the uh, ovum to uh, uh, to multiply and grow uh, an X chromosome is required. If it is 46 YY, that is uh, there is no uh, chromosome from the maternal side, and uh, uh, it is fertilized by uh, a Y chromosome. Then it uh, and, uh, and it would not would, would not survive if both the uh, 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 fertilizing sperms are. Uh, why sperm? On ultrasound, complete mold uh, rarely reveals a fetus or amniotic fluid. Now, this is uh, a haploid number of chromosomes. This is diploid. We all know this is basic knowledge. So, if uh, uh, an egg gets fertilized by two sperms, and this component of uh, its chromosomes is extruded out of the egg, then it is left with 23, 23, a pair of uh, chromosomes deployed, but they are both of paternal origin. Or uh, this is excluded, it is fertilized by just one single sperm, and then that divides within the ovum, and then it, it becomes 46. So the first one can be 46XX or, or uh, 46XY, which is comparatively only 10%, but most of them are 46XX, which is uh, about 90% of moles are like that. And in uh, another condition, because of uh, some genetic mutations uh, of these gene sites, a normal conception occurs, but it turns into a mole. These two genes, uh, uh, which, which have been mentioned here, that is uh, a genetic mutation which leads to formation of moles. A partial mole uh, retains its nucleus and is fertilized again either by one sperm or fertilized by two sperms, and the chromosomal makeup is uh, triploid. So this is uh, uh, because of that it is not 46, but rather 69 XXY or 69 XX or 69 X double Y. Chromosomes of partial mole are only two thirds paternal and one third would be maternal, whereas in uh, uh, complete moles, it is all paternal. So this is how it, it happens. Risk of developing into an invasive mole, in case of complete uh, hydrated form mole, the risk is quite high, 15 to 25%. And in case of partial mole, it is less than 5%. And uh, as I said earlier, that HCG is important because uh, it's a good biomarker for assessment of progression of disease and also to assess how the patient is responding to the treatment which is being given, usually which is uh, chemotherapy and also for uh, follow-up of uh, the patient after the treatment has been completed for post-treatment surveillance. Because as we see that if uh, the uh, the HCG levels are either rising or even they are plateaued and they do not fall, that uh, would indicate uh, that there is something wrong and further investigation would be required. Uh, and uh, if, uh, so early detection of progression of uh, complete hydrated form mole or, or partial mole to gestational trophoblastic neoplasia would be identified through this. Uh, and also because of this uh, assessment of uh, HCG, the, uh, and obviously development of chemotherapy, uh, this is one uh, neoplastic uh, condition related to uh, uh, trophoblast, which is gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, in which we can expect 100% cure. Uh, there is wide variation of uh, incidence, uh, less than 1% to 2, uh, less than 1 to 2 per thousand, so less than one would be that would be 0.057% or 0.2% uh, if they are in 1,000. So that's why it is uh, given in 1,000. 
Previously, it was thought that uh, certain blood groups may be associated with that, or it was more, uh, it was thought that it was more common in dry seating areas like uh, Southeast Asia, uh, like Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, etc., in those areas, and also in Japan, and in some areas of uh, South America. Uh, but uh, uh, now it is considered that uh, we do not really know what predisposes uh, people to this, but uh, that may be the genetic make makeup. But uh, now we find that it is uh, it presents with a higher frequency in uh, women from Asia, Middle East, and Africa, whereas in Europe and USA the incidence is low. It may be racial, it may be it's got to do with something to do with diet or uh, environment or whatever. Uh, but uh, in Korea and Japan, recent reports show that the incidence of molar pregnancy has uh, come down to as much as it is in Europe and USA. Similarly, the incidence of choriocarcinoma, that's uh, less in North America and Europe, uh, most common or more common in Southeast Asia and in uh, Japan or maybe probably South uh, Korea, it will be comparative in, in between the two. Uh, as I said earlier, that rice eating or certain blood groups, uh, they, th they were thought to be uh, the reasons, but it is seen uh, that uh, the maternal age has got something to do with it. The incidence is comparatively less between the ages of 21 to 35, but it is more if uh, the pregnant woman is uh, less than 21 years or more than 35 years of age. And women who are more than 40 years uh, of age in them, the uh, incidence or chances are 7.5 times higher compared to the women between the ages of 20 and 35. So, uh, and that probably obviously either the uh, ova are too immature and uh, in the early stages, so the gametogenesis and fertilization, etc., cetera, uh, those uh, because of uh, immaturity or less maturity, I would say, that makes them more vulnerable to changes like that. And on the other end, it is uh, the aging of the ova. We know that the capacity of uh, the ova after the age of 40 uh, to get fertilized and produce a pregnancy that uh, is uh, decreased compared to the capacity of the ova between the ages of uh, say 20 and 40. Uh, and therefore, this, is, this may uh, be a factor in uh, uh, the incidence uh, related to age. And if there is a previous history of molar pregnancy, those women are 10 times more uh, likely to have a, a repeat mole. And uh, uh, there are, uh, we, we had a few cases of uh, recurrent moles. Aruba patient Meravita. Unme ye or ye again Chile mein, South America mein, it was found that there were families in which the mole was occurring repeatedly. And now it has been found that it is because of this uh, uh, familial clustering and recurrent mole is the rule in familial biparental recurrent moles due to mutations of ye jo do genes hai, in ke saath. Go ahead. Grossly hydrobic in say absence of normal placenta or differential diagnosis, partial mole hydrobic uh, histologically floral pattern may be up histology slides with the kata on trophoblastic proliferation of the teen signs hai. cistern formation of your calcaro case there are vacuoles. Other grossly vacuoles that are histologically be one cistern also is a uh, Kind of vessel type of thing. So there is uh, that expanded volume uh, area, uh, trophoblastic proliferation, and then significant cytological atypia and mitotic figures, which are hallmarks of uh, malignancy. So those are the features which are found in even complete mole, which is as per se is not considered malignant. Uh, in the first trimester, will I may not be there, but then bar may also be there. qualified. Histological features in partial mole are less marked, and uh, there may be fetal parts of cells present, and hydropic spontaneous abortion may mimic this. Now, this is the floral pattern where in which it is kind of cistern formation is made. Florid is the uh, 
यहाँ पे ट्रोफोप्लास्टिक प्रोलिफ्रेशन अगर आप ये देखो कि यहाँ पे ये एग्रीगेशन ऑफ सेल है ये काफी ज्यादा इस तरह से हुए हुए हैं सो ट्रोफोप्लास्टिक प्रोलिफ्रेशन है एंड हियर इन दीज सेल्स इफ यू सी एटीपीआर एंड माइटोटिक फिगर्स वो भी सीन सो दीज आर द थ्री थिंग्स सिस्टम फॉर्मेशन ये एंड दिस इज ट्रोफोप्लास्टिक प्रोलिफ्रेशन एंड दिस इज सिग्निफिकेंट एटीपीआर एंड द माइटोसिस ये कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स ऑफ कंप्लीट एंड इनकंप्लीट और पार्शियल मोल साइटोजेनेटिक्स में वो पहले हम बात कर चुके हैं 46 एक्सेस और वो दूसरे की एंड कोरियोकार्सिनोमा ग्रॉसली बल्कि विद हेमरेजिक एंड नेक्रोटिक एरियाज इफ यू सीन से अ फ्लोरेड और फंगेटिंग कार्सिनोमा ऑफ द सर्विस इट मोर और लेस वुड लुक लाइक दैट बट इट would be a little more solid kind of uh, growth or uh, in the endometrium and apart from the uterus it can be found in tube because it can happen in uh, 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 an ectopic pregnancy to over the ovaries and also uh, metastasizing because you you see now we know that we we are now doing uh, 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 those uh, cell-free DNA in maternal blood, even in the first trimester, which means that the fetal cells get into maternal circulation, and you can extract that uh, DNA from the maternal blood. Now, similarly, these cells, uh, trophoblastic cells, can also or do get entry into maternal uh, circulation, but because of the immunological mechanisms, they are not allowed to uh, take hold of any area and grow. To get stuck and grow, that is the immunological thing, because there is a certain limit. Uh, uh, what is known as the layer of intermo in uh, the uterus and all, which uh, doesn't allow the spread of, because normal pregnancy is 50 percent paternal. So, uh, as a matter of uh, common sense, one would uh, expect that a pregnancy would be rejected by the immune immune system of the mother. But then there is a certain protection provided because of uh, uh, the restraining uh, uh, mechanism, which keeps the uh, the the uh, fetal tissues uh, protected from the maternal immune uh, mechanism. But those cells of uh, uh, fetal origin, which get into maternal circulation, they usually will be taken care of uh, by the immunological mechanism of the mother. Now, if they do not, then they can. Uh, take hold like uh, the endometrial cells they they can go to develop uh, endometriosis so similarly there is greater preponderance now if you look at the spread of these uh, metastases in case of choriocarcinoma like lung liver brain those are the areas which are rich in blood supply so they 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 get more of uh, whatever tissue gets uh, uh, detached or that gets into a uh, circulation uh, to form emboli and then they they would uh, uh, get attached somewhere and start growing over there histologically choriocarcinoma does not show uh, chorionic villi there are abnormal intermediate trophoblast and cytotrophoblast cells and areas of necrosis and hemorrhage etc similarly these are the features of placental cytotrophoblastic tumor epithelioid trophoblastic tumors because i will be giving this uh, uh presentation on to your site so you can uh, later on uh, uh, look at the details of that so clinical presentations since uh, there is a uh, lot of hcg being produced by the trophoblast and all that and uh, patients may present with exaggerated symptoms of pregnancy like nausea vomiting and many of them may have hyperemesis uh, and uh, because of abnormality of the pregnancy there may also be bleeding and uh, secondly the, uh, if the pregnancy is not diagnosed early on now we have so common dating scan in the first trimester that we would identify the abnormalities such as high hormone quite early on but if it escapes that detection or if the woman uh, doesn't have had haven't had the opportunity of having an ultrasound so it can go on and also cause pre eclampsia in first half of pregnancy i told you last time that this is if a woman develops features of pre eclampsia in first half of pregnancy then there is uh, 
pathognomonic of uh, uh, a developing hydrolytic form mode. And then when, when second trimester vaginal bleeding, but that bleeding can also be there in the first trimester. And uh, sometimes the patient may uh, give a history of passage of vesicles or grape-like structures in the bleeding if she has. Uh, this is the appearance, honeycomb appearance of snowstorm appearance or ultrasound mm -hmm. and absence of fecal parts. So molar pregnancy is diagnosed on ROS and histological examination. And uh, clinical presentation, irregular vaginal bleeding, history of acid, positive pregnancy test, sporting ultrasound evidence, less common hyperemesis, excessive. Uh, yes, uterus is usually in more than 50% of cases is, uh, is larger than dates. So if larger than date uterus, either twins or hydrated form more. Hyperthyroidism. Can be because there are those hormones. Sarah uh, explained last time that they have that cross reactivity, and then they they show that same kind of uh, uh, alpha chain or what? Uh, same of alpha subunit. Yeah, as alpha subunit. So early onset preeclampsia, abdominal distension due to theca lutein cysts, they can uh, become very large. Very rarely, women can present with hemoptysis or seizures because of the effect of the secondaries. Other, actually, uh, there is a uh, preeclampsia is a disease of second half of pregnancy, uh, which is uh, which is that which, uh, which happens in a normal pregnancy with the fetus. Uh, the preeclampsia occurs only in uh, second half of pregnancy usually. Now, uh, gestational trophoblastic neoplasia uh, usually diagnosed by HCG surveillance without uh, if there are no symptoms. And definition of postmolar uh, gestational trophoblastic neoplasia according to FIGO Gynecology Oncology Committee meeting. 2020, but every three years they do review these. And actually, most of uh, the material of this presentation is from uh, FIGO Gynecological Oncology Committee uh, recommendations or description of that, uh, which was uh, given in 2021. So definition of postmolar based is based on HCG level changes, histology, and specific investigation and specific uh, features, which are when the plateau of HCG lasts for four measurements over a period of three weeks or longer, that is day one, seven, fourteen, twenty-one. So if after say molar pregnancy or even in pregnancy, that's why it is important when a woman after uh, a delivery. Particularly, if she presents with abnormal bleeding, beta HCG should be one of the uh, uh, investigation that we do. We generally resort to ultrasound and we know that if there are any central tissue or something left behind. But to have a high index of uh, more, uh, gestational trophoblastic disease or rule out neoplasia and not to be caught unaware, we should also have beta HCG estimation. And if beta HCG is found to be high, then there should be serial estimations of beta SCD like here on a weekly interval. And we should continue assessing the, those till either we have removed the uh, products of conception if they were there, and then we continue to follow beta SCD till it comes back down to normal. Otherwise, the, we would be missing some of the cases of gestational trophoblastic disease or neoplasia. So that is number one. Number two is when there is a rise in HCG for three consecutive weekly measurements after a delivery or no, even ectopic pregnancy. And of course, if there is a histological diagnosis of choreocarcinoma. Uh, these are uh, the investigations. Just X-ray appropriate to diagnose lung metastasis and can be used for counting the number of lung metastasis, which is a cannonball virus. Liver metastasis by ultrasound or CT scanning and brain metastasis by MRI or CT. For monitoring of uh, we wouldn't have them available, but beta HCG would be quite enough. A persistently low HCG level needs continuous monitoring as some may progress to GTN with rising HCG levels. Raised but not very high levels, they should be and to exclude a false positive result, re, uh, retest, etc. But and this is because if clinical presentation is such which arises or arouses uh, that suspicion of uh, gestational trophoblastic disease, 
then we will follow uh, this line of action. And it is important that 50% of uh, uh, gestational thromboplastic neoplasia follow a molar pregnancy and 50% will follow either a spontaneous abortion, ectopic pregnancy or a full-term preg uh, full pregnancy. And clinical presentation would be postpartum abnormal vaginal bleeding. As I said, that we should investigate not only after having uh, done an ultrasound and excluding retained process of conception, but also by estimation of uh, beta SCG. Bleeding from metastasis or liver spleen, intestine, pulmonary symptoms, and neurological signs. And GTN should be considered in the differential diagnosis of patients with unusual presentation, and serum HCG should be performed for more of the part. Suction evacuation is the treatment of choice. Generally, it is considered. When I was uh, preparing for my FCPS at that time, uh, it, it was uh, recommended that syntosinone drip should be put up uh, an hour or two before uh, the time of uh, start of the procedure so that the uterus would start contracting and also start pushing the, at that time, prostaglandins and the mesoprostol type thing were not available. But later, uh, even in the 2020 RCUG guidelines, uh, those guidelines uh, advise against putting up uh, an oxytocin drip because of the fear of pushing uh, uh, molar tissue into maternal circulation and uh, causing spread of that and then later on development of uh, distant metastasis. But uh, FIGO uh, recommendations, which came a year after RCUG uh, guidelines, they do uh, recommend that you put up oxytocin drip at that time. And uh, this is to uh, prevent undue uh, and excessive hemorrhage. The uterus uh, does not, con because the mechanism of arrest of bleeding after evacuation of the uterus of products of conception, either full-term pregnancy or an abortion or even molar tissue is contraction of the myometrial muscles, which are interlacing fibers and the blood vessels pass through them. And when they contract, they uh, constrict the uh, blood vessels and thereby arrest bleeding. Otherwise, the uterus would continue to bleed because there is so much of denuded area in the placental back. And in case of uh, uh, molar pregnancy, the area is even uh, wider than uh, what would there be in a uh, same stage preg normal pregnancy. So it is important that the uterus contracts to uh, to to uh, arrest uh, undue bleeding, and therefore now the, uh, this uh, and one of the reasons why it is advised is that uh, now also it is uh, being advised that in many cases perhaps it will be a good idea to cover this procedure with a dose of methotrexate, which is chemotherapy. So oxytocin infusion started at the onset of suction curatage and continued postoperatively to enhance uterine contractility and decreased blood loss. So this is uh, that recommendation of cross mesh blood availability and particularly if the uterine size is more than 16 weeks, an RX should be given uh, because it's my RX in. Or uh, previously it used to be uh, advised and uh, uh, recommended that a uh, second uh, evacuation of the uterus should also be carried out to make sure that uh, no part of the molar pregnancy is left behind or also to assess the uh, material retrieved by that second DNC histologically to rule out the possibility of development of choriocarcinoma. But now, uh, again, because of the ultrasound, particularly, we can have oxytocin ka likha hai uske upar. So, because of ultrasound, uh, now we can identify. Yes, I, I, I will put it up. You see, ma, 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 all right, I'll clarify it. FIGO guidelines or FIGO uh, guidelines, FIGO chapter or recommendation of FIGO's oncology committee is that you put up syntosinonia just as spelling cover. If you look at the 2020 RCOG guidelines, yes. Uh, they say that uh, you do not, those guidelines say that you do not put up syntosinone drip before. So if in the examination, this is what you can quote, that 2020 RCOG guidelines advise against putting up, putting up a drip, but FIGO Oncology Committee recommendation of 2021, that recommends that the oxytocin uh, infusion should be put up. 
हिस्टरेक्टमी फॉर मोलर प्रेगनेंसी आप सबसे ना कहीं बात करते हैं या साथ देते हैं हम साथ ही बात करते हैं मैं तो क्योंकि आई ब्राउन तो ओल्ड स्कूल मैंने वो किताब करने वाले थे तो उसमें वो था कि पहले तो एक दो घंटे पहले लगा दें ये तो अभी साथ लगा दी अब तो आपके पास ऑस्टा ग्लैंड है इंट्रावीनस ऑक्सीटोसिन उस तरह से उस वक्त तो था ही प्लेनुला तो होता नहीं था उस वक्त सुई लगा दी करते थे सारा वक्त सो ऑल्टरनेटिव सक्शन क्योरिटा ये इसका ये है कि इवैक्यूएशन हो जाएगी परमानेंट स्टेरिलाइजेशन हो जाएगी डिक्रीजेस द नीड फॉर सब्सिक्वेंट केमोथेरेपी एलिमिनेट्स द रिस्क ऑफ लोकल मायोमेट्रियल एंड वी एन एज अ कॉज वगैरह वगैरह सो ये हिस्टरेक्टमी के तीसरा सो सक्शन इवैक्यूएशन इज वन हिस्टरेक्टमी इज टू तीन तीसरा वो ये मेडिकल इंडक्शन ऑफ लेबर एंड हिस्टरोटमी कि आप यूट्राइन कॉन्ट्रैक्शन शुरू कर लें उस तरह से और हिस्टरोटमी कर दें This is not recommended because it increases maternal morbidity development. ये भी उस जमाने में probably होगा कि जब uterus का मुंह ना खोलता हो लेकिन ये कभी भी ऐसा नहीं हुआ. Even a large uterus, 34 weeks size uterus filled up with molar tissue can be evacuated by just dilating the cervix to Hagar's number 10. So that's quite easy and the oxytocin served that purpose quite well. HCG monitoring uh, every one to two weeks essential for diagnosis and management. Or uh, is me post molar ye hai uske kitni der karna hai complete hydrated form mole me monthly HCG measurement for six months after the HCG has come come down to normal level. So it has to be monitored for six months. Remember this in partial mole single confirmatory. Ek na par normal aaya uske baad ek mine ke baad fir aap karo. और वो इसी भी अगर नॉर्मल है तो फिर फर्दर कराने की जरूरत नहीं है क्योंकि उसमें इंसिडेंस कम है नाउ दिस इज प्रोफिलेक्टिक मेथोट्रेक्शन जिसका मैं अभी जिक्र कर रहा था कि अराउंड द टाइम ऑफ इवैक्यूएशन यू गिव मेथोट्रेक्सिन और एक्टिनोमाइसिन डी मैं अमेरिकंस वो एक्टिनोमाइसिन डी को ज्यादा फेवर करते हैं एंड देयर आर रिपोर्ट्स दैट एक्टिनोमाइसिन डी प्रोबब्ली हैज अ बेटर इफेक्ट इसमें लिखा हुआ है कि आएगा कि इसमें लिखा हुआ है लिखा हुआ था लेस लेस कि एक्टिनोमाइसिन डी इस बेटर ऑल्टरनेटिव दें मिथोप्रेक्सिन लेस बेटर टॉक्सिकेंट्स इसका कंपैरेटिवली बेटर इफेक्ट है सो अगर इफ यू गिव अ कवर ऑफ दिस कीमोथेरेपी अराउंड एड और इमीडिएटली फॉलोइंग मोलर इवैक्यूएशन दैट रिड्यूसेस इंसिडेंस ऑफ पोस्ट मोलर टीटीएन टू 3 टू 8% वर्सेस अगर नहीं करते तो 15 टू 20% and should be given if risk of post molar gtn is much greater than normal agar wo age patient ki us tarah se hai or where adequate hcg follow up is not available patient chali jayegi bhakkar ya laiya chali jayegi wahan pe us tarah ka follow up nahi hai to wagaira wagaira to us tarah se termination of pregnancy not indicated if accidental pregnancy ha ye tha pehle hum ye karte the ye follow up ki baat aa rahi hai में ऐसा होता था कि ये पहले एडवाइस किया जाता था कि पेशेंट शुड नॉट गेट प्रेग्नेंट फॉर एटलीस्ट सिक्स मंथ्स प्रेफरेबली वन ईयर द रीजन वाज एट दैट टाइम बीटा एसीजी एस्टीमेशन वाज नॉट अवेलेबल एंड इफ प्रेगनेंसी टेस्ट बिकेम पॉजिटिव जो रूटीन प्रेगनेंसी टेस्ट यूनिट में पॉजिटिव है तो देन देयर वुड अल्ट्रासाउंड भी अवेलेबल नहीं था सो देयर वुड बी कंफ्यूजन वेदर दिस इज मोलर प्रेगनेंसी और इट इज अ नॉर्मल प्रेगनेंसी now we are not living in that age now we have the advantage of having beta hcg available and also ultrasound so term agar ultrasound pe aap dekho pregnancy ho gayi hai which might be first detected by a rising level of beta hcg so if a molar evacuation has been carried out and you are following that patient with serial estimation of beta hcg and you find that beta hcg is now rising so there can be two things either there is development of neoplasia gestational thromboplastic neoplasia or there is that the pregnancy is now it is easy that you do ultrasound after a week or two and if you see in a uh, sac and then the fetus inside then that means it is pregnancy and you can continue with that now the recommendation is that one can uh, uh, termination karne ki zarurat nahi hai you can continue with that previously it was also uh, oral contraceptives used to be considered to be uh, contraindicated uh, for uh, pre prevention of pregnancy but now uh, and it was thought that probably oral contraceptives would favor development of gtn 
but now it is uh, proven it's not so therefore oral contraceptive can be given advice not to get pregnant so oral contraceptives should, should be used and the patient should be advised not to get pregnant at least for a, one year mm -hmm. because you are going to uh, follow her up oh yes you can follow but you wouldn't use an intrauterine contraceptive device uh, is, is it true previously was your intrauterine contraceptive device on its own can cause irregular bleeding and if there is irregular bleeding that again would cause uh, a little bit of confusion because you wouldn't know whether it is because of persistent uh, uh, trophoblastic activity or it is because of so therefore some non interferent uh, the, the hormonal contraceptive would be uh, you are right that previously only barrier methods were used but now uh, you can also use contra. Low uh, risk of recurrence later pregnancy, low after one molar pregnancy, much increased after conjective molar pregnancies, or you have a scheme. Uh, Diagnosis on ultrasound, high risk of spontaneous abortion, if you have normal pregnancy, continue but risk of GTN is almost doubled. Molar pregnancy may 15 to 20 percent, but if there is a normal pregnancy coexisting with molar, then the risk of GTN is doubled to 27 to 46 percent. Treatment of GTN is by chemotherapy. Best regime depends on stage and classification. This may score a FIGO score according to 2000. Less than six, low score have more than six, six or more. Four. Yeah, have four stages. If the disease is restricted only to the uterus, it is stage one. If it is restricted only to the reproductive tract within the genital structures, that's two. If it extends only to lungs, nowhere else, it is stage three. Agar baki jaga pe liver pe ya other jaga brain mein hai, to stage four only. This is uh, how you would uh, then score or risk scoring you have wo in Muslim age and decedent pregnancy, more interval from index pregnancy, kidney there ka hua. Jitna zyada agar uh, interval hoga, utna hi zyada lethal hai, utna hi zyada difficult wo, uh, ye, that, that's why wo jo hai, placental site trophoblastic tumor wala jo hai, agar 48 months ke baad hai, to wo, uska score kafi zyada ho jayega, so high score. Number of metastasis of previous field chemotherapy, etc. Patients with low risk, one of the either methotrexate or actinomycin B, or yeah, uh, yeah, 2016 review tha, just mein unhone kaha tha ke actinomycin D is better than methotrexate. Methotrexate ke dosage schedule jo hai, wo first line single agent chemotherapy hai, to wo is tarah se hai, lekin uske saath agar actinomycin B bhi agar diyan dena ho, to wo is tarah se hai. Aur hysterectomy option hoti hai, post-operative chemotherapy, usme bhi dena padegi, aur HCG monitoring bhi karna padegi. Therefore, hysterectomy is not a highly recommended uh, uh, procedure for uh, this. After HCG level has returned to normal uh, consolidation with the two to three more cycles of chemotherapy will decrease the chance of recurrence. So wo, wo, us se karna hai. overall complete remission rate is close to 100%, which is very good in this. Multiple agent chemotherapy, yeah, etoposide, the methotrexate, ectomycin D, cyclophosphamide, or mepristine, yeah, is tarah se hai, yeah. about 20% of patients who do not retain complete response with this regime, overall survival uh, rates wo, unka, I, would be still be 95%. ये जो है ये देने के तरीके मुख्तलिफ हैं इनके ये कॉम्प्लिकेटेड सा है ये दैट्स माइंड इट इस ओनली फॉर ऑनकोलॉजी पीपल के डे वन पे आप एटोपोसाइड एक्टिनोमाइसिन डी में तो ट्रेक्सेड दो डे टू पे एटोपोसाइड ये दो और फिर रिजीम टू डे एट पे आप ये दें और ये वीकली इंटरवल सो फर्स्ट वीक में आप वो डे वन टू करते हो दूसरे वीक में आप वेंट्रिस्टिन तीसरे वीक में फिर वही रिजीम वन से नहीं रहेगी और इस तरीके से वो करते रहते हो so they 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 uh, go on to like that surgery may have hysterectomy for uncontrolled uterine bleeding and also uterine artery embolization so hysterectomy can be through endoscopic or it can be conventional surgery laparotomy to stop bleeding in liver gat kidney neurosurgery for bleeding into brain resection of an isolated drug resistant tumor a role of radiotherapy but are limited now when i give a rubber except in treatment of brain metastasis and efficacy compared with intrathecal it will be controversial. Uh,
Here, lecture on the ये लेक्चर मैं कर दूंगा उसके ऊपर आपको मिल जाएगा ये क्लोज एक दोबारा ओपन कर हां क्लोज एक दोबारा ओपन कर ले कुछ शेयर कर चलिए मैं क्लोज कर रहा हूं इसको इस लास्ट स्लाइड ही रहेगी कि फॉलो अप जो है वो वो इंपॉर्टेंट है वो इस तरह से ये आई के नहीं सर इनवेसिव मोल की ट्रीटमेंट हिस्टेक्टमी होती है आ यस अनफॉर्चूनेटली यही होएगा क्योंकि लोकल एक्सीजन उसमें आप करना भी मुश्किल होएगा इनवेसिव मोल में वही ट्रीटमेंट uh, वो बनेगी lastly last slide hai ye wali this is about follow up monitoring every month for at least 12 months reliable contraception throughout this period and future fertility pregnancy and offspring are not affected by that chemotherapy or otherwise so ye that would be a reassuring thing theek hai thank you very much ho gaya we ran through this all uh this lecture we will put up uh, in uh, लेकिन इसको आप जाके खुद से पढ़ना ये पूरा आपको ये जो चैप्टर है पूरा मिल जाएगा आपको नाउ देर इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग दैट आई वुड वांट टू डिस्कस अबाउट दिस और अदर लेक्चर्स आपने ये करना है कि लेट्स से कि इसकी स्लाइड्स uh, हैं uh, ये हैं फिफ्टी वन स्लाइड्स वी वेंट थ्रू और आदर कोई क्लिक सो वॉट यू डू इज कि आप इसमें से देखो कि जी आपको टेन स्लाइड्स कौन सी ऐसी हैं जो जो अगर आप देख लो तो वो आपके लिए बड़ी ठीक होगी जिससे आपको पूरा जिस्ट ऑफ दी गोल्ड मेडल वो आपको मिल जाएगी सो आइडेंटिफाई दो टेन स्लाइड्स उन टेन स्लाइड्स को अलग करके रख और उनको देखो उनको याद कर लो बिकॉज इट विल बी इम्पोर्टेंट टू गो मेमोराइज दो मटीरियल ऑफ दो टेन स्लाइड्स इन स्टेड ऑफ दो स्लाइड्स तो वो जो है आप ये हर किसी ने अपना अपना करना है ये एक्सरसाइज हमने एक दफा देखी थी कि उन्होंने एक प्रेजेंटेशन दी जिसमें चालीस पैंतालीस स्लाइड उन्होंने कहा तीन स्लाइड आप इसमें से लेके आओ और आप पूरा लेक्चर वो बड़ा अच्छा बन जाता है सो मैं तो आपको फिफ्टी वन में से कह रहा हूँ क्योंकि इसमें इस तरह से इतनी सारी चीजें हैं कि आपने दस स्लाइड अपनी चूज करनी है वो आप अलग करके रख लेना बाकी लेक्चर जो है वो अगर पूरा पढ़ने की जरूरत होगी तो देख लेना अदरवाइज वो जो दस स्लाइड है उनके साथ आप रिविजन कर सकते हो Which you can वो उनको सीधा सा अगर इसके ऊपर डाल दो ये इस फॉर्मेट में ये फॉर्मेट में इसको करके तो आप वो दस स्लाइड को बड़े आराम से वो एन लार्ज करके तो आप ये छह स्लाइड तो ऐसे आ जाती हैं चार ऐसे और इनको आप पढ़ सकते हो सो आप को पांच मिनट लगते हैं वो दस स्लाइड को पढ़ने में सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन रिवाइज इट इफ वंस अ वीक और वंस a fortnight you go through that in two or three months you would have to revise it four five times so wo fir aapko kafi yaad rahega aur fir aapko us tarah se karne ki zarurat nahi hai snow storm on ultrasound and on x ray it was multiple ha snow storm aur dusra kya tha ek aur honeycomb appearance jo to ye dono kaha jata hai 
So uh, it was multiple. What is diagnosis? Either molar or poly. It is molar pregnancy. It, it is snowstorm and multiple opacities is the choreo. दोनों चीजें एक ही पेशेंट को है तो उसको आप वो करोगे अगर वो कोरियो करोगे मोलर नहीं करोगे कि कोरियो फॉलोइंग मोलर क्योंकि स्नोस्टॉम हो गया कि उसमें है एंड इट इज अर्ली मेटास्टेसिस टू लंग्स क्योंकि जो मल्टीपल ओपेसिटीज जस्ट एक्सरे पे नजर आती हैं वो उसकी सेकेंडरीज की हैं सो इट इज कोरियो फॉलोइंग और फॉलोइंग इमीजिएटली आफ्टर मोल दिस इज द डायग्नोसिस राइट right. और कोई सवाल और कमेंट नहीं वो मोलर का कंफ्यूज इस तरह से नहीं है बिकॉज मोलर इज स्नो स्टॉम ऑन अल्ट्रासाउंड एंड एक्सरे जस्ट शो दैट देयर आर ओपेसिटीज इन मल्टीपल ओपेसिटीज इन द लंग्स सो दो आर इन कंजक्शन विद स्नो स्टॉम अपियरेंस इन दैट वो वो इस तरह से है 90% are x and 10% are yes 46 how to differentiate between invasive mole and gtn invasive mole is something which is restricted to uh, the uterus which uh, now uh, uh, the doppler would uh, indicate that uh, there is invasion of the myometrium and uh, between the endometrium and uh, myometrium so that will be there Uh, ultrasound uh, evidence of invasion and also Doppler, which will further strengthen that. I do not know of SR or HR regimen. मुझे नहीं पता ये कौन सी है? तो एक फोर्टी सिक्स वाइ क्योंकि वन एक इट इस नाउ इट इस नोन दैट uh one x is required for the cell to survive if there is no x the cell will not survive it will not grow it will not survive simple examiner asked uh, in examination ke wo hr wo mujhe dekhna padega hr aisa tumne dekha koi maine aisa nahi i i don't know of that or सिंगल रेजीम हो सकती है और एच आर का क्या होगा वट वुड बी एच आर एच आर आई डोंट नो देख लेंगे इसको देखा जा सकता है ठीक है सर एक्सक्यूज मी सर ये जो मैंने सिनेरियो बताया था कि स्नो स्टॉम एक्सरे भी अल्ट्रासाउंड पे था और एक्सरे पे ओपेस्टीज तो क्या ऐसा हो सकता है कि ये मोलर ही हो क्या पता मोलर टिश्यू जो है वो लंग्स में गया हो वो लेकिन नहीं वो टिपिकली व्हेन यू टॉक ऑफ ओपेसिटीज इन ऑन चेस्ट एक्सरे इन लंग्स दे दीस आर कंसीडर्ड टू बी कोरियो कार्सिनोम सो इट मे बिकॉज मोलर टिश्यू इस तरह से जाके ओपेसिटीज वहां पे बनाएगा नहीं वो जब होगा तो फिर वो ऑडियो कार्सिन होगी ठीक है चलेगी ओके जी सब